Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. This just arrived. It is the kit from um, Halibut Electronics. The uh, company is in Arroyo Grande, California. And this is their circuit board, uh, and you wire it up, uh, attach it to a VNA, and you can measure the effective effectiveness of ferrite beads, common mode chokes, you can measure common mode currents. It's um, a lot of parts in the bag, so I want to be be careful about opening it up. Um, well, it's got a, a blue circuit board, and from what I saw online, there is a front and a back, and that side appears to be the front. And that side appears to be the back uh, because the switches are labeled and the in and out ports are on the back side. So I'm going to take this, um, set it out, make sure I've got everything. So I'm going to go to the parts list first and then um, step one of the instructions. And it's so hot outside um, today that the solder could probably melt if I just put it outside. I won't, I won't do that, but it's really hot. Okay, here goes. Parts list first. Make sure everything's here. I've got a board laid out, and I'll uh, set the stuff out. Make sure I've got everything in this bag, and then go from there. Okay, so here we go. This is the uh, uh, Commo current device from Halibut Electronics, and it's got a part number see if it's on here because I don't know what it is um, it says uh, common mode choke test rig version 3 I think is what it says here we go okay so first I mounted the two switches because um, they were the smallest so I got them into place and soldered Next came um, on the same side the two SMA connectors. Now again, this is the back side of the board, so we're going to call this the rear. On the front side, I installed the two SMA connectors. Went fairly easily; they're not hard to put in. Then the two B and C connectors. Again, fairly simple soldering. Then I mounted the uh, two banana jacks, the SO239s and the N female. Um, those again, pretty simple. On the opposite side, there's a wire from the center pin to a spot on the board. So it's a pretty easy thing. So once that's done, it, you're finished. And for me, it took about an hour. wasn't a big deal. Um, Probably the hardest part was the first two steps, uh, the switches. Use some caution with them because they're small and they don't take a lot of heat, so you want to use minimum heat with that. The rest of the connectors, like the SMA, uh, they're pretty durable, so not a big deal uh, to install. again pay attention to the front and rear on this board um, you, before you do anything double check recheck triple check that you're on the proper side of the board so I attached the circuit board to an old metal bracket I had which was part of a ham M rotator control box uh, used a couple of extra uh, standoffs just to give it more support and then that's attached to a dollar store cutting board or breadboard and then uh, put the VNA also on that board. All right, so here we go. I've swept it um, without a ferry bead, and it indicates pretty much right at the zero. So let's add one bead. And it is a 31 mix and the correct size. Okay, so I've got one bead on. 
and let's sweep it and see if there's a change. Looks like about uh, maybe 2 dB, maybe a little more at some point. Looks like between 2 to 4 dB difference. So that's good. That's a start. That's one bead. And we'll sweep it again. A slightly smaller change. Um, that's the 5 dB line. So let's call it 5 dB. The first one was probably about 3. This one's about 5, so that's about a 2 dB difference. And I, it's kind of what I would expect is that it's, the amount of change is going to be smaller as it go along here. Okay, there's bead number 3. Okay, so um, roughly 5 to about 7, so we call that about 6. I'm not looking for precision, just sort of what is it doing. Okay, so 3 beads, about 6 dB. Bead number 4 in place. And let's sweep it again. Okay, that one is about... Uh, let's call it, um, yeah, maybe 8 dB. All right, another, okay, that is five beads. Let's sweep it again. Yeah, let's say 10 dB. So now we're at 10 dB with five beads. So about 2 dB per bead. Okay, here comes bead number six. And maybe... Uh, 12 dB. So we're going to call it 12 dB. So we're still at about 2 dB per bead. Okay, bead number 7. Uh, pick a number. Maybe uh, 13 dB or so. Let's see. Another bead. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 beads. And sweep again trying to pick an average uh, maybe 14 db at that point so eight beads about 14 db now in the past when i got to eight to ten it really start oops started to slow down all right now that's one two three four five six seven eight nine beads sweep again Let's call it 15, 15 dB. Now I'm going to push the beads together just to make sure, and they are, they're pretty tight. They're hard to slide because they're tight on the coax. Okay, I've pushed them together. One more bead to see what happens. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten beads. In the past, this was the point of diminishing returns where I would stop. That's a pretty small change. We're at, we're at about um, 16, 17, yeah, let's say 17 dB. Try one more. I'd like to get to 20. Pretty small change. Um, 17, 18 dB. Maybe we picked up another dB. Okay, here's one more. I bumped the microphone doing it. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 beads. Sweep. Again, a fairly small change. Um, Uh, maybe 18 dB. It's 20 dB up at this frequency. All right, I think I can see if I got one more in my... Okay, this may be the last bead. So, uh, snapping that on. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 beads. And... Let's mark that. Uh, let's mark that as a reference and sweep. 
Okay, so there's really no difference now. So probably going back to 10, 10 beads again is about the point of diminishing returns. Doesn't quite get us to, to the 20 dB I'd like to get to. That's the answer about, again, about 10 beads. And in this case, it measured, uh, to pick a number, about 18 dB less, lower in frequency. All right.